Yo, what's up everyone? Welcome back to another episode of the Weekly Roundup. My name is Frankie. And I'm Peter from Mr. Money TV. Yeah, and a special thanks to the Coffee Break newsletter that helped us to provide all the news that we are going to talk about today. They are daily newsletter that sends direct to your mailbox every day and they bring up all the news that you need to know in just three minutes. So if you want to get smarter, go and sign up for the Coffee Break newsletter. The link is attached below. Today, as usual, we have some interesting news that has been gathered over over the week. Now, to start with our first news, Frankie, I got this question for you. Have mm. you ever borrowed money before? Oh yeah, for sure, man. Ah, mm. How much have you borrowed before? Uh, highest amount is about close to a million. Close ringgit. to a million, uh, yeah. for, for your property. For la. my property, right, correct, right, correct. Right, right. You guys watched the video before, right? If you're not, go and check out in the ah. Mr. Money TV channel. Okay, but can you imagine hey. borrowing one billion a year? One billion a year. <laughs> okay. No. That's a lot of money, right? That's a lot of money. Businesses also quite a lot, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you imagine if you can borrow 20 billion every day? Wow. No need to pay back one, eh? Yeah. Okay, need uh, to pay back, la, but pay back. there's a caveat, right? Right. There's this country, mm. which is the US, mm. has been borrowing 20 billion dollars every day. Every day. So do you know because wow. of that, the US government actually posted a 1.697 trillion budget deficit for the fiscal year of 2023. Trillion? Yes. Over the years, uh, apparently they have already borrowed, right? 33 trillion dollars. And yes. this 33 trillion dollars, I think I have seen it not too long before only, right? Maybe a couple yes. of months ago. Yes, yeah. that's right. So. US, ever since COVID time, right, they've been borrowing money like crazy. Mm. Yeah. In order to fill the economy, you know, keep the economy running, they've already borrowed a lot of money. And that amount uh, up to today comes up to 20 billion a day, man. Wow. That's crazy amount of money, right? And so what happened is that just to repay this, right, they have to pay actually $659 billion on interest this year alone. In $659 billion? Interest alone. Yes. <laughs> and, okay. and this amount, just to repay interest, has right. already exceeded their military spending, which is their highest spending. Correct, correct, correct. Which means now the biggest amount they are spending on right now is no more military. Uh, it's on paying back money. Paying back money. Interest that, alone. Not even paying back money, you're just servicing interest. Uh, Pardon Mukala because they also increase the interest rate so much, right? So they have to bear the interest expenses as well. No, so imagine if you already owe people so much money and mm. you pay so much in interest, right? Mm. What are you going to do? have to tighten my belt. Lah. Tighten your belt, right? Correct. But you know, US is not known as a country that will tighten their belt, right? Mm -hmm. And some of they are the taiko in the world. Mm. So you know what? Right. Recently, with all the war that's happening, yeah. they decided that they need to give people foreign aid some more. Oh. And right now, they are looking for 100 billion from the Congress to actually pump in for foreign aid and then... Uh, even pumping in another 60 billion for Ukraine and another 14 billion for Israel. Oh, do you remember not and long- not another like including la, so okay. over 100 billion. La, yeah. That's what they want. Correct. Do, do you remember not long ago, they just hit the debt ceiling and that's then right. they had all this debate and say that should they actually increase the debt that's ceiling. Right. Now they increase already what they use the money for? They go and do- Give other people money. Oh yeah. dear. And at the same time, they really? need raise interest rate and then their own people all dying cannot help. So how- uh, So- with all that in, right? <laughs> I don't think next year is going to be a good year for for the US, man. Yeah, there you are. This is where it gets really interesting. I think US, <laughs> I really don't know how to say. Your people are already suffering like crazy. And then you want to increase the interest rate and everything all. Mm. And then now you want to raise another 100 billion yeah. to go and give a loan out to people. Uh, not even loan, it's foreign aid. Foreign uh, aid. Yeah. yeah. Foreign aid so means you don't billion, expect right? money you back. You don't expect yeah. money returns or more. Mm. Yeah. Oh, allow it. So that, that's the thing about US, right? Very, very power. Sometimes I really think that they are crazy. Mm. But what to do? They are US, right? Correct. And the reason why they can do this is because everything is in USD. Mm. So when they are borrowing money at the time, mm. they borrow in USD, USD right? Mm. And after they borrow a lot of money, mm. then they need to pay back what they do? <laughs> the quantitative easing. Quantitative yeah. easing, right? Print money. So I borrow until I cannot yeah. borrow already, not enough money, pay back already, mm. then I print money again. Mm. <laughs> print money and then pay myself back. Yeah, pay myself back. Yeah. I borrow in USD, I, give, I print out USD to pay you back in USD. Yeah. It is a damn good deal, right? 
damn yeah. good deal, but it's not good for the economy, la, right? Yeah. Everyone will suffer in the process. And that's why US is the taiko of the world because yeah. the system is rigged in such a way that they have the unlimited money supply. Yeah. yeah. Maybe that's one reason why Bitcoin is going up. Okay, so we all know US is not in good shape, right? But the second largest economy in the world, right? It's not too far off only, mm. right? The China is also facing their own problem itself, right? So in March this year, right? Uh, President Xi Jinping, he said that, okay, in order to manage my country's debt well, I will only set my uh, fiscal deficit at 3% per year, mm. Okay? Mm. which is quite healthy la, for a developing country. Yep. But because of all this, like uh, all the Evergrande issue, all the country garden issue, which is making their property market very jittery right now, and there's a chance that it may experience a property bubble burst. So they have to step in. The government have to step in to try to um, cushion the economy. So they got no choice but to increase the budget deficit to 3.8%. Now, what does this mean? Eh? It means the government will have to borrow more money in order okay. to spend. So US, they have this flexibility where they can do that kind of things. China is <laughs> do that kind of things, but China is a little bit different. They do things a little bit more properly. So they are going to issue bonds, mm. issue bonds to borrow money. And they're going to borrow 1 trillion renminbi. Uh, did I get oh. it right? Yes, they're going to borrow 1 trillion renminbi, which translates to 650 billion ringgit. God, that yeah. is crazy. Eh? But what do you think about China on this hand, right? When when China actually borrows so much of money, do you think they have the ability to repay back? Because their, their GDP has been slowing down. It's not like mm. US, you know, at this mm. point, mm. US GDP is still going up, right? Yeah. And in China, on the other hand, ever since COVID time, things has been really bad for them. Yeah. So what are your thoughts about this? Well, you see, right? China and the US, they are sort of fighting, right? So one way for US to fight with China is they ask their companies, their businesses, not to do so much business in China. So mm. what, what happened is all these US companies, they start to pull out their business and diversify into other regions. So that's one of the reasons why Malaysia get a lot of FDI that's also. That's right, that's because right. Because all, all the companies are coming that's here. Right. Now. So as a result of that, there are very little FDI flowing into China. For the record, right, in the second quarter of this year, up to second quarter of the year, China only managed to bring in 4.9 billion US dollar of FDI. 4.9 billion, billion, billion USD until the second quarter. So the previous amount, right, in 2021, they managed to rake in about 55 billion US dollar. So from 55 billion now, 4.9 only. Well, this more than 90%. Yeah, 90%, 90 more than 90%. Plus percent correct. Drop. Correct. So remember last week we say that in just one week alone, Anwar managed to bring back 3.4 billion ringgit worth of. Oh, oh, oh. Right? Anwar can count him for them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah one know. week, one week count him. There. They should <laughs> hire our PM. Hire, right? <laughs> they should hire our PM to be their Minister <laughs> of Foreign Trade. Can we take a small cut, can we? Uh, we Wait, that's a very good idea, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah because, I think it's a good idea. Write down in the comment. Yeah, because at the end of the day, Malaysia is a trading economy, man. <laughs> yeah. right. So we I trade. This, uh, we we in the past a lot of things we cannot beat China. Yeah. This year we beat China in this. Mm. Uh, <laughs> Malaysia bole. Malaysia bole. Okay, talking about money, right? Mm. For countries, right? Mm. I think Malaysia is not just looking at FDI to boost up the economy, no. Mm. Yeah. Remember last time our PM actually said that he want EPF to be investing 70% of the money into a Malaysian local equities, right? Mm. Yeah. Mm. So what happened is by June 2023, yeah, EPF has increased the investment into local companies at 665 billion, which is 9% more than 2022. Oh, that's, so that's up a lot. To today, yeah. it's already about 10% more already, uh, around 10% mm. more already. Now, mm, so what happened is that Deputy Minister Ahmad Maslan actually said that by the end of the year, <laughs> it should reach 700 billion ringgit. <laughs> yeah. That's a lot of money. This is a lot of money. A lot yeah. of people have been questioning it as well. Like, why the return is better outside? Well, doesn't really matter. Yeah. End of the day, that is the... Support Malaysia. Yeah, that's the yeah. support Malaysia agenda, right? All right. So, Ultimately, at the end of the day, they are definitely going to head towards that direction. Mm. So I guess it's a good boost to our local listed company and whatever Malaysian companies are there. So what happened is that if you actually look at this, right, it means that by 2023 end of this year, EPF plans to actually put out 
97 billion or 83% of its investment into the local market. So this tells you that the government himself are confident of the local market. Mm. I, I guess in a way it's actually a good thing because for other foreign countries looking at Malaysia, you are like the put dada say we are good, right? Mm. Yeah. So it's like okay lah, fair lah. I guess it gives a lot of confidence ah. Yeah. Now having said that, mm, they have to actually manage their investment wisely because. With all these things going around, right? They they need really diversify their portfolio correctly, lah. Correct. And it's very right, rightly put. Why? Because in the past, right? Actually, the government direction is for EPF to go overseas instead. Mm. Why? Because they have been investing so much money into Malaysia, it becomes too cornered into into one market only. Yes. Yeah. So, but now I think the direction is to bring some of the money back to Malaysia to help to support Malaysian businesses to grow even bigger. That's right. So actually for 2022 to 2024, EPF will be investing 45.5% in fixed income instrument, 42.5% in listed equities and that 42.5%, that 70% will go into uh, mm. uh, Malaysian, Malaysian equities. Malaysian equities. Right. Then 3% in private equities and 6% in real estate and 3% in money market instrument. Mm. Yeah. So at the end of the day, uh, One more thing that PM also actually did already mention the last round was that there will be no more flexible withdrawals already. What are flexible withdrawals? Remember last time they already said that they were just uh uh we can just withdraw from EPF that time during COVID time. Uh-huh. So this is no more allowed already. So all the IC na, all right. the all yeah. the stuff. What happened yeah. is that just as budget 2024 has already mentioned, they are going to come out with a flexible withdrawal account, which is an account three mm. that you can actually put your money from account one and two inside. Yeah, mm. and then. After you can withdraw it as your emergency fund. Mm. However, having said that, the interest rate will be lower. Okay. Yeah, the returns are not interest rate lah. Huh? Right. Basically, what happens is that I recall during the time during the withdrawal, ah, really, they really took quite a big hit. Mm. And here's where I think EPF is fantastic, right? I think if it's a normal fund house, ah, oh, that idea dry straight away dry. Yeah. EPF them powers, is it? No joke. Yeah, because there are I think three, four rounds of special withdrawal during during the COVID nineteen yes. time, right? Yes. I think all yes. these add up to I think more than one hundred and forty yes. billion ringgit. That's like there's an I Lasari uh. which we drew uh twenty point eight billion I Chitra. Yeah, the second one twenty one point four billion we drew. Then after I Sina, yeah fifty eight point seven billion, and then another special withdrawal of forty four point six billion. Total amount withdrawn was one hundred and forty five. 5.5 billion ringgit. There are so many eyes until I don't know which one is which one already, man. Yep, yep, <laughs> yep. So I, I, this one was received with a mixed news to a certain extent, mm. but I think overall people are quite happy. Mm. Yeah, people feel at least I can access to some to of my, my EPF funds. funds. Yeah. yeah, which I think there will be a lot of people who are going to put money inside and let's say there's emergency fund and then take out and then go and spend also lah. Mm. Yeah. In a way, actually, I feel the government is giving too much flexibility on a supposedly a pension, a retirement fund. Yeah. Yeah, because people are not so disciplined, one. Uh, when they see money that they can take out, right? Chances are you will have one, two jokers That's who right. go and take out everything. Yeah. What What do you think? Do you actually think that this withdrawal thing is actually a good thing? If the people really need the money, then then yeah, of course you have one new avenue to take out money. I think it's good for emergency users. But like I mentioned, lor, there will be some people who just see the money, then they hand cut out, then they just take it out and say, that, oh, I need this emergency fund. But after that, they go and go shopping and whatnot. So this is the thing that we hope that we won't see. Yeah. I, yeah, I think it's okay to be able to withdraw, but I think that the implementation method should be a bit more stringent or well mm. implemented. Like maybe interview the fellow first, making sure that the fellow really got issue. Oh, I got one solution. If you withdraw money from account three, say you withdraw five thousand, right? Then maybe what what they can do and they can consider to do is then deduct back from your salary. Mm, maybe Slowly, deduct maybe one more percent, uh, right? deduct, deduct one, one more, more percent, percent, correct? Just one more percent yeah, until you cover back the five thousand. Yeah, like maybe maybe like you take out the, then uh, after six months later, then you. Slowly, we'll pay, slowly right? deduct back, uh-huh. right? I I think that would be good, but I think it's going to be meet with a lot of challenges, lah. Correct. And people will not be too happy, mm. lah. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So let's talk about some business news, okay? So lately, Asia has been getting a lot of highlights, right? Like Tony Fernandez sitting <coughs> down there getting a good massage and whatnot, right? <laughs> yeah. But yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But actually, ah, uh, he's doing serious talk in the meeting, now, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but. Let me ask you: Do you agree hey. with the fact that he took off his clothes and do the 
meeting to be honest not very appropriate la. it's a it's an office setting and then you're having a zoom meeting some more then the whole world can see you half naked like that but uh. I, I think honestly i think it's his private matter he's at the level he can be as eccentric as he want but it's but a meeting posting it up on linkedin <laughs> yeah why uh? okay but having said that hmm. maybe this is marketing right he has been known to make he always make very controversial stuff mm. and he always say that at the end of the day there's no such thing as a bad press right? mm. yeah maybe this is the time he need all the marketing that he needs because he may be coming up with a new business model all right a franchise model like mcdonald's like that uh, uh, so imagine franchise yeah like, what, what, what's, what's he gonna franchise this time what is his biggest business air asia man. think about it what what if you can franchise your brand air asia to another country and then they can run their own version of Air Asia, and then he just collect royalty. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. Um, um that, that is very, very new. Very new, right? So apparently that is what he's planning. So this is just part of the many, many uh, fancy idea that he has. So with this new model, right, he plans to penetrate into Bangladesh and Maldives. So next time you fly to Bangladesh, next time you fly to Maldives for your holiday, right? It will be a It'll be Air Asia. It will be Air Asia. But it's not owned by Asia. All right. <laughs> McDonald's model, doesn't it? Uh, McDonald's model. It could be, don't know, some some random businessman putting Air Asia. A actually, actually, it's quite smart also, you know, it's you smart. think about it. It's because, smart. Because, right, if let's say today I got a lot of money, I want to open the airlines. Means uh, all I need to do is just hire a bunch of jets. Hmm. And then after that, you're going to manage it for me. Which he has already done in the past. So all the planes in the Air Asia, right, it's not under Air Asia, it's in a leasing company. And Air Asia go and lease the planes from the leasing company. But not all planes are utilized all the time, one man. You got all you get some extra planes yeah, sitting yeah. in the parking there, one, right? These are the planes that can make money also. Mm, mm, so I, maybe, maybe that's the plan. Uh. Cause there's a lot of people who got a lot of money. Correct. Yeah. Correct. And then also it's like you know, instead of you starting your own My Airlines, mm. you can just say, let me give you this money mm. and you build the airline yourself, right? Yeah. He can earn more leasing money from there, mm. from the planes that he's not using. But will this be impartial when you run the business? Uh? Like to fill up the... Hey, no. But if let's say you take the whole country, they won't. All right. Yeah. All right. Uh, mm. Yeah, because one country won't take two planes on man when they take right. they take like yeah, 10, 15. Take from Bangladesh, it's Bangladesh. Correct. Air Asia, la, Correct. Right? Because today we have Air Asia Thai, we have Air Asia Indonesia and all that. All these Air Asia are the the Air Asia, the capital A Air Asia. But now what they want to do is a third party Air Asia, the franchise model. Yeah. I think that's a pretty smart move. Pretty smart. Pretty smart move. He also, he's also doing another move which I think is also very smart. So remember during COVID-19 lockdown, Air Asia cannot fly. So they kanjong lah, right? Number one, they got a lot of debts. Number two, their planes cannot fly. So they have to think, 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 then they come up with new business model and then they start up all this teleport business lah, which is the Air Asia version of Grab. Logistics. Yeah, logistics. Right, logistic, right? and then, logistic. yeah, correct. Yeah. Then they also have uh, Big Pay. Mm. Mm, big pay. Yeah, Santan. Santan, yeah. Santan, which is the restaurant that yes. sells the nasi lemak and stuff mm. like that. So they started to build all these small, small little startups. And all these startups today, right, their business are doing quite well actually. And they're mature enough already. So what he plans to do is to lease some of these businesses into a spec, a special purpose vehicle company, mm. and lease it in the US. Again, cash out. Tan Sri Tony. It's Tan Sri Tony. a whole different game, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This guy's game is yeah. different. He's the, level. he's the entrepreneur of everybody's benchmark. <laughs> <laughs> All of us want to be like you him. You know who he reminds me of? Uh? Who? Vincent Dunn. <laughs> Vincent Dunn. Uh? I think this guy is. In those days. In those days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like those days, it was Vincent Dunn who does all this, right? Mm. So he's becoming Tony Fernandez. Tony Fernandez, right. Yeah. We hope we can invite him to, to our show one day, uh, huh? Mm. Yeah, but, but I think it's quite hard to invite him. Uh. Yeah, we can learn from him how he do business. <laughs> if you guys would like that, please write yes in the comment or either write Tony in the comment, right? <laughs> now, let's move on to the next part, talking hey. about businesses. Let's not talk about big, big, big businesses, mm -hmm. uh, right? Remember uh, in the past, mm. in many episodes, you keep talking about SMEs and small business mm. and startups mm. is actually the next key of the future. Yes. In Malaysia investment line. In, in Malaysia sense. investment. And in fact, in budget 2024, the government also gave a lot of attention to all these SMEs and startup businesses. That's right. Yeah. yeah. And we actually talked about it in uh, both of our videos. You know, uh, we said that like one of the things that you can look at is actually 
it seems that when it comes to the big corporate kind of stuff, mm. uh, government is looking a lot more on the FDI side to come in because they're already coming in with big corporations, yeah. right? Yeah. But when it comes to smaller businesses, they are focusing Correct. a lot more firepower in the development budget there. And hopefully in future, this becomes the giants in Malaysia, the next unicorns, right? Yeah. So these are called DDI, Domestic Direct Investment. So that's what the government wants to focus on next. So to boost that effort even more, right? The government um, wants the Ministry of Science, Technology and Innovation, MOSTI, to do a partnership with Busa Malaysia to go and identify some of these high potential startups and SME and then try to do a listing, an IPO for such businesses. So this means that MOSTI is going to work together with Busa, mm. look for businesses that are unlisted and unlisted. go and persuade them to be listed. Um, right? not, not say persuade, yeah. but like encourage them. Correct, right? correct. Yeah, educate them, them educate tell them, them why they should go listing, Which what are the also benefits. Means yeah. that for these smaller businesses, they may not have the capital, they're going to give them the right direction and point them to the right people as well and lend them whatever help they need to be listed because they need to prepare for at least three years to four years to be listed. Man. Correct, because they need that requirement of profit in order to get listing. Yeah. So the point here is, as an investor, if you know that this is the direction of the government already, what you can do is to maybe go and start investing in a small business. Wait, I got a call. I think Mosty call us. <laughs> Joker. <laughs> Joker. <laughs> So if you know any friends who are actually uh, in SME business or anything like that, right? Mm. This is your opportunity if you have been thinking about getting listed mm. or even if you're not getting listed, you're thinking about growing your business. Mm. That is the whole exercise all about. Yeah. All right. Listing is just the idea that in order at least you need to generate X amount of profit and revenue and so on. Yep. So they are definitely more than willing to help you if your company is a great company, mm. right? So talk about it. If it's not from the point of view as a business owner, right? What about as an investor? What can we do? Okay, so as an investor, like I just uh, mentioned just now, right? So what you can do is to identify all these small business, all these SMEs and startups, and they have this platform called equity crowdfunding. Mm. So companies that are not listed, obviously you cannot buy it from Busama, right? So you can go to all these alternative platforms and look for all these offers. And if you believe in the business can grow, you invest in the early stage. When they are mature enough to go listing and if Mosti go to them to persuade them or they feel that, oh, I think my next step is to go IP already, that's where you can gain that extra return for yourself. I believe that uh, moving ahead as well, uh, government will also be looking at a lot more into ECF to Yeah, yeah for sure. I, I got a feeling that that's going to be part of the thing because they yeah. also talk a lot about my startup, you know, accelerators exactly. and everything. All. Exactly. So naturally, ECF is part of the manner go. If not, if not, if not, then it will be PE funds mm. and uh, venture capital. So depending on yourself, if you do have certain connection with venture capitals or either PE fund, I think there are certain PE funds that allow you to put in like a million ringgit, you know, yeah, two million yeah. ringgit, gather the fund together and then they help you to manage it and invest. Yeah. yeah. So that could be part of the opportunity as well. Yeah. If you think of, of it, there all these kind of links up together, you know. So remember during budget 2024, the government said that for unlisted shares, you will get 10% tax on a capital gain tax, right? But it's exempted for venture capital and people like that. And exempted for companies that are going listing. So now if you tie that story into this story, yep. now it starts to make sense. Yep. Yeah. Makes perfect sense. So it's either if you're a high net worth individual, you can invest into PE funds or, or VCs, mm. right? Yeah. Then you are sitting on something really exciting moving ahead, right? Yeah. yeah. So actually on the next part is that either they are going to go listing or either your PE fund sell, then you get, you know, it's taxes for you, that mm. kind of stuff, right? Mm. But on the other hand, they are trying to encourage Malaysians to really think big from now. Yeah. That, that's the idea. They are Correct. not looking at like, like mom and pop, they will help you, giving you some loans and stuff mm. like that. But that's not the main goal. The main goal is you need to start thinking big. Yeah. yeah. Crouching tiger, hidden dragon. Yeah, it's, actually, think about it, right? It's hey. kind of like Singapore. Eh? That's what we want to be. We aspire to be. Oh, suddenly now I'm more impressed. Uh, uh, like now in, after it makes sense I feel like oh, so actually, suddenly you bad. feel there are a lot of support for, for small yeah, yeah, businesses yeah, already yeah, right? yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I hope mm. my call coming uh. 
<laughs> I'm not going to fall for it this time. <laughs> <laughs> all, right. all right. So that's all about it for today's uh, episode. If you enjoyed this episode of Weekly Roundup, do hit the like and subscribe button and leave your thoughts in the comment section below. We'll see you next week. All right. See you again. Bye.